Let's take a look at Capture One Pro for infrared photography. If you already have Capture One Pro and are curious about its ability to edit infrared images, we'll cover that. If you don't have Capture One and have FOMO about other RAW editors, we'll address that as well. I'll look at the desktop and mobile versions. I've got some good news and some bad news. Let's get into an edit. Let's switch from the library section over to adjust. This is where we'll make most of our adjustments. I want to set a white balance. We'll come down to the white balance panel. And from here, I can use the picker to select the portion of the image that is neutral that I want to use to set a white balance. So I've got clouds, I've got this sculpture, I've got rocks. So we could try all of these. So we'll try the clouds. That gives me a pretty good white balance. I could try the sculpture for a slight variation, or I could try the rocks. I actually like the sculpture. One of the things that's really nice about Capture One is the range of the Kelvin slider. So you can see here, if I slide all the way to the left, it goes down to 800. If I slide all the way to the right, it goes up to 14,000. And this is different from many raw editors, which are limited to a low end of 2000 Kelvin. By going down to 800 Kelvin, this actually allows us to set a white balance on most infrared images without the need for any custom profile or any other tools. So that's really nice. I'll click back on the statue here to set the white balance that I like. So now I've got a good white balance. Let's make a few other changes to the image. If I come down to exposure, I can adjust the exposure for this image. I can look up at the histogram and look at my image to make sure that I'm getting a good exposure, a nice balance. So maybe about a one half stop increase from what this was shot at. I can also increase the contrast of the image. Next up, I'll go into high dynamic range. This allows me to set the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. This image is actually pretty level, so I don't need to make any dramatic adjustments here, but if your highlights were very hot in the image or you needed to pump up your shadows, you could certainly do that here. The next thing that I want to do is look at clarity. So in clarity, I could bump up the clarity for an image. I could increase the structure. These will give me more contrast in my image. There are some choices here as well for the methods. You can use natural, punch, neutral, and classic. So you can try each of those to get the amount of contrast that you like in your image. The only method for swapping colors in Capture One is the hue shift. That's some bad news. However, I have a better method for doing this compared to the video I made on Capture One a few years ago. If we open up the color editor, we have some options here. We have basic, advanced, skin tone, which we're not gonna worry about. In the previous video, I talked about using advanced, selecting a color in my image, and then expanding that, adjusting the hue by 30 degrees, which is the limit, and then repeating that six times for the foliage, and then six more times for the sky, which was a bit cumbersome. Let's talk about a new way to do that instead. Let's go to the basic panel. In the basic panel, I have a number of color swatches for all the colors I'd like to adjust, but I also have a global option, this multicolored palette swatch on the right-hand side. And by adjusting this, I can adjust all of the colors in the image, both the foliage and the sky, instead of doing it separately. So this allows me to take the hue and shift it up 30 degrees. We're still limited by the 30 degree limit. We're going to do this up in layers. If I click the plus, then I can get a adjustment layer. That's the default type of layer, but that's an empty layer that doesn't have any of the image selected and we don't want that. So let me subtract that. The drop down here next to the plus will show the different types of layers that are available. So the empty adjustment layer, the default, or a filled adjustment layer, that's actually what we want. We want an adjustment layer that's going to apply to the entire image. So let's click on new filled adjustment layer. Now that we have our new layer, I'll come down to color editor. You can see there's now a little brush symbol next to the color editor that shows us that we are editing in this layer. And now if I adjust the hue, I've adjusted the hue within that layer. Now I simply need to do this five more times. So I'll click the drop down, new filled layer, adjust the hue. You can see the colors shifting as we go. We'll add a third layer adjust this. We could stop along the way, of course, if you like any of these colors in your image, you can do any colors that you like with your image. We'll add another one, so that's four. Fifth gets us to 150 degrees, and the sixth 
allows us to do a hue shift of 180 degrees. So that's what your image would look like with a complete 180 degree hue shift. This is doable, but it's a little tedious. You don't wanna be adding six layers to every image that you want to edit. So let's talk about a faster way to do that. The presets that are used here in Capture One would only save one layer. And that's not really useful. We wanna be able to save all the layers. So we're gonna do that by saving a style. So if we go back up here to our tabs, we can switch from adjust over to the style tab. Within the style tab, we have an option called styles and presets. We can click on the three dot menu over here and say, save custom style. In the custom style, it gives us a choice of what we want to save. So we absolutely wanna save all the layers, but we don't wanna make any changes to exposure or white balance or details. We wanna be able to do those separately for each individual image. So we'll just make sure that nothing in here is checked except for the layers. Once I have only the layers selected, I'll hit save. Now I need to save what this particular style is going to be called. So what we'll do is we'll, by default it's the image name, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna call this IR Hue plus 180. That's the name that I'll be using for this. And if I hit save, now you see that this is saved on the left under custom styles so that I can easily apply this style to other images without having to create all those layers manually. And of course you're not limited to a 180 degree hue shift. You could do other amounts of hue shift. So I could take my layer six and I could reduce a little bit for this color variation, or I could eliminate layer six by hitting the minus here, which would get me back to 150 degrees, or I could subtract layer five, which would get me back to 120 degrees. And each of these could be saved as a separate style so that you can apply a variety of styles to your image. Let's talk about more of the bad news. Your color swap options are limited to the hue shift in the color editor. There is no channel mixer in Capture One Pro, no way to swap the red and blue channels or to play with the green channel. There's no way to do an invert since layers in Capture One don't have blend modes. Capture One Pro supports ICC profiles, but doesn't recognize any color swapping ICC profiles I've created in Photoshop. The mobile app only supports iPad and lacks support for layers. The iPhone app is even more limited and there's no Android version. In summary, Capture One Pro is a mixed bag for infrared. It supports a great range of color temperatures for white balance, but is limited to only one method for swapping colors. You could use a plugin such as On1 to swap colors if you don't mind buying both programs, the round trip editing, and extra TIFF files. If you already own Capture One Pro, you can certainly use it for editing infrared images. For visible light photography, this is an excellent raw editor. The interface is clean and crisp. The program is responsive. I wish it had more options for swapping colors and better mobile support. If you want to do more raw image editing on mobile, Lightroom's mobile feature parity with Lightroom Desktop is much better. If you don't already own Capture One, programs with more color swapping options may be better suited for infrared, such as Lightroom, On One, Darktable, or Raw Therapy. Do you use Capture One Pro for editing infrared images? What do you like and dislike about it? Let us know in the comments. If you'd like to learn more about infrared photography, sign up for my newsletter, Infrared Insights. I'll keep you informed about the latest videos, software, guides, and equipment for infrared photography. A link is in the description. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey, like, subscribe, or comment. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.